Let's continue lecture 3b by focusing on composition of rotations and then we'll do homogeneous transformations. So here we have a schematic of a robot and there are these red, blue, and green coordinate frames attached to every joint. As we move theta 1, you'll see that the robot rotates. Every coordinate frame after the base frame, which is 0, is going to rotate as well. I think it's more exciting as we have additional ones rotate. I'll tip this one in. I'll rotate this one through here. We've got an impossible configuration. As we rotate these through, you can see that they are going to adjust everybody after them. Now what we want to be able to do is talk about two things. First, what happens to these rotation matrices as they're caused by each of these joint rotations? How do we figure out what this rotation is? And then the more complicated thing, which is shown in this large H matrix down here, which has a particular form. There's this three by three complicated matrix in the top left, zero, 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 one, and then a vector on the right size. We're gonna learn how that expresses the position and the orientation of each of these coordinate frames. It's something called a homogeneous transform. And we're gonna end today's lecture with how we construct that. So let's get ready and let's look at some examples of rotation transforms. So now let's talk about some rules when we have compositions of rotations. So the frame relative to which the rotation occurs is called the current frame. What is the current frame that I'm in, that I'm relative to the rotation? And then we're always going to remember that our zero frame is the fixed frame. So in a rotation, we can either apply this with respect to the fixed or the world coordinate frame, or the current rotation matrix. When rotation R is performed with respect to the fixed world coordinate frame, the current rotation matrix is pre-multiplied by the rotation R. But if that rotation R is performed with respect to the current coordinate frame, the current rotation matrix is post-multiplied by R. Let's do some examples to make this a little more clear. So remember, if it's a world frame, then what we want to do is pre-multiply. And if it's a current frame, then we post-multiply. And so here, the first rotation we're going to do is around the world x-axis, and we're going to rotate by phi, and then we want to rotate by theta about the current. So it's a current we're going to post-multiply, r y of theta, and then finally we're going to rotate by psi about the world z-axis. Rotate the z-axis by psi. Now here's a, a slightly different. We're going to pre-multiply if it's about the world frame. And if it's the current frame, then we're going to post-multiply. So here we have first a rotation by the x by phi. And then we have a rotation of the current, so that's post-multiply. Rotation of y by theta. And then we have a rotation of the world axis, so Rx by psi. And we've got something interesting here. Those are rotating around the same coordinate frame. In quizzes and exams, I always want you to simplify. So this is, since it's around the same axis, this is Rx by psi plus phi. And then rotation of y by theta. So just remember to do that simplification. Next one we're going to have rotate by, so we got an rx by phi again. And then we want to go about the current axis, so we're going to post multiply. And then we're going to go by the current axis, so that's going to be rz psi. And then we're going to rotate by alpha by the world y-axis. So we're going to pre-multiply. And we get our rotation here. I don't see any simplification that I can do, so I'm done here. So now let's do a problem where we've got a missing link. And we're, let's say that we've got our one coordinate frame. One, two, and three. So this transformation that I have here is R2 in frame 1. I've got 3 
in frame one. I've got R3 in frame one. What I want to do, I want to find this matrix um, that has a three and two. So I don't have it. But what I can do instead is I can just backtrack around here. In order to do that, this one's in the right direction, but this one I'm going to have to invert in order to figure that out. What I want is what is 3 and 2. Well, I know that is equivalent to 1 and 2, and what is 3 and 1. I have this term. I don't have this term. I do not have this first term, but do have its inverse. I have 2, 1. So I could take the inverse of that, r 3 in frame 1, and then I would get what I want. So now all I have to do is write all these in. So r3 and 2 is equal to this term that I have here, 0, 0, negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And take the inverse of that times, I've got over here this answer, 0, 0, 0, 1, half, negative, root 3 over 2, 0, root 3 over 2, 1, half. Let's do that inverse first. I've got that inverse there. Then I'm going to multiply through, and I've got 1, 0, 0. And then I can just solve that out. So I get here, root 3 over 2, 1 half, my middle row. And finally, I get my negative 1, 0, 0. And I have my solution for that. In our next transformation, we want 4 by 4 matrices for both rotation and translation. So this is your rigid body motion. We call these homogeneous transforms. We represent them with a big old capital H, where that 4x4 four four matrix is going to have an R over here, a D over here, a 0, and a 1. I've hidden things by writing these as matrices, but this R, that's something out of SO3. So it's a rotation matrix, and this D is in R 3x1. So really how we'd write this out is going to be H is equal to Got a matrix here, we've got, I'll just say 0 and 1, x and 0 and 1, y of 0 and 1, z of 0 and 1. We've got 0, 0, 0, and we put a 1 down here, o, x, and o, z in frame 1. And what is the coordinate of that? So this is asking, where is the origin of that frame? Now we have to do a little bit of modification for our vectors to do a homogeneous transform. And what we do is we just augment our vectors. So P0 becomes P, capital P, in frame 0. And what we do there is we just augment it with a 1. So we just took, take P in frame 0, and then we add a 1 after that. Now we get to file the same thing that we've learned so far. So if the rigid motion h is relative to the current frame, then we will post multiply. And if it's to the fixed frame, then we will pre-multiply. So you see that if your p0 is uvw, then we're just going to put a 1 underneath that to make a 4 by 1 vector. So I want you to study sections 2.5 and 2.6 for our next lecture. And we're going to work on some in-class problems when we come. Here's an example of composing basis rotation. Zero degrees in all of our axes, and we get just the identity matrix. If I start to rotate around my x-axis, then I get this offset. My x stays the same, everybody else switches. Let me just rotate that through there, and you can see that we've got these transformations. We've got a few that are easy. These are the kinds of ones I like to ask for questions in my exams. So I'll just leave that there. Or we'll bring it down back down to zero again. You can see as I rotate around my y-axis, that my y-axis stays the same. Uh, stays 0, 1, 0. Everybody in the corners are 
rotating as I go. And let's just do the z-axis, and you can see that only the top upper four entries change. So now let's pick something that's 90 degrees. Here's a 90 degrees. And so we can see composition of rotations allows us to get any rotation in the world. So we can rotate through these. And now this X change is resulting in just a change in the upper four, upper right four entries. And if I take things off of a 90 degrees, you can see I can get this to be arbitrarily complex. In fact, we're not even seeing this whole matrix here. as we compose these together. You can see that what I'm doing first is applying around the z-axis and then around the y-axis, the current y-axis, and then around the current x-axis. Um, and my R00 is just the identity matrix. Or you could instead think I'm starting with this R00 and then I'm going to go about the fixed x-axis by theta and the fixed y-axis by psi, and the fixed z-axis by phi. We get these rotations.